Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on Bybit and how to use Bybit for leverage trading. Today, I wanted to talk about something a bit unique and really cool, which is trailing stops. It's something people don't use enough of, and actually, it's a really cool feature. Now, what I've done is I've entered a trade um, the other day where I entered in a short position, meaning that I sold Bitcoin at a price of 8569 and I've let it sit for a little while. And as you probably know, if you've been watching Bitcoin, it's gone down a bit more uh, in this particular time frame. We're now at 8,315. So I am sitting here with $222 of profit based on trading about 0.9 Bitcoin or $7,500 worth of Bitcoin. And I'm trading that with a 5X. Now, I made the mistake. I did not put in my stop loss and my limit order. Shame on me. I did not follow my own rules. But needless to say, you know, I, I have this trade that's open. And uh, what I wanted to show you guys now was how a stop, uh, sorry, how a trailing stop works. This is really, really cool. Now, if you don't know what trailing stops are, I'm going to explain briefly what happens. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter a value as well and show you this. So what happens is this. Right now, the Bitcoin price is 8316, uh, which is uh, or 80, 80, 80, 83, 19, 83, 20. What I'm doing is I'm setting a, 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 a stop price, um, a stop loss price. But what I'm doing is I'm setting it 25 points away from where I am right now. So when I enter this trade, the 83, 20 or whatever the value is, it's going to set a price 25 points away from that. And as Bitcoin continues to drop, it will pull my sell price down along with me. And as it goes back up toward that price, uh, that stop limit that that's arbitrarily set here that's moving around this trailing stop it's going to follow and move along with me so as the price of bitcoin moves the the trailing stop will trail the price so as bitcoin goes down my trailing stop will follow it and keep moving my uh, stop loss price down along with me and as bitcoin moves back up because i'm in a short position it will have a stop loss that stays in one place. So I'm gonna show you how that works just to, so that it makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm this and you'll see that it goes in as a conditional order. Now, conditional orders basically mean that uh, they are not active. They are there under a certain condition when that condition fulfills itself. And you'll see what's happening here already that the price is moving and changing. Let me show you what the screen looks like. So I have, a, I have a couple of different orders in here. The one that I just put in the 7,500, which is to close the position, is based on a price of 83.18 and the distance now is 24 and a half. So what's happening is that right now, uh, my price will, my, my sell price will be 83.42.5. As Bitcoin goes down, you will see that this number here of 83.18 will go down along with it so that it continues to pull down the trigger price. So the 83.42 will go down to 83.41, 83.40, 83.39. And as it's doing that, it's protecting me and giving me more value. Um, but on the flip side, if Bitcoin were to suddenly shoot up by five or 10 points, this price would remain 83.42.5. If we hit 83.42.5, my position would close. So you can see what's happening. It's moving along here. You can see my order is changing. It's moving down, it's moving down, it's moving down. So now it's 83.33. And this is great, right? Because now what I've done is I'm literally automating my trade. I don't have to worry about anything. I'm just allowing Bitcoin to drop. And as it drops, my sell price is going to continue to follow it. And I don't have to sit there worrying and thinking about where should I sell? Where should I not sell? When should I close the position? When should I, what should I do? All that, you can just take that off, your ta off the table and you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to just leave that position sitting there. I don't care. Um, I'm going to close this other one out because it's not re relevant anyway for what we're doing. So all we're going to do now is we're just going to follow this and see what it does so that you can see that what's happening right now is I've got my position and my position is showing me that I've got a minus seven and a half thousand and I have a, tw a 25 point trailing stop set in the system. I've got a profit that's around $227 right now and a conditional trailing stop at 8333. So, okay. I'm not going to get the same amount that's showing here of 227 because that's based on the price of 8569. Sorry, not 8569. It's based on the price of the 8310, which is where we're at now, which is what's giving me this profit. But when the conditional order keeps going down, then I'm very happy. And I've, what I've done is I've locked in my profit. I realize that, of course, if I sell this at 8333, 
versus 8311. 80, uh, of course, there's a difference of you know 20 some odd points that I'm going to lose in profit. But on the flip side, you know, I don't have to manually keep setting the, the sell price or the closing price for this. Now, the other way of doing this, of course, that we talked about previously, is you actually can set your stop loss. Now, I can set my stop loss at, let's say, 5%. But when I ordered, when I put my order in at 85.69, a 5% would be 86.56. Well, I'm cl clearly, I'm way above that now. So there's no benefit in my doing that. So what I can also do is I can use this in combination. So the trailing stop is automatically trailing along and making sure that various you know, benefits are occurring. If I don't use the trailing stop, I can just manually set it myself. So the way you would do that is I would say, well, my trailing stop is going to be, or my, sorry, my stop loss is, 80, is, is going to be something like um, 83.20, for example, which would lock in my profit clearly in a much better place. Um, but the, you know, the, the downside to doing this is I have to keep manually changing, manually changing, manually changing. And as price is fluctuating up and down, you know, there's a lot of manual entry in doing that. So the reason I like using the trailing stop instead is because I'm, a, I'm literally I'm automating that process I can see the distance is 19 points. So right now I'm still set at 83.33. If we drop another six points, my distance will be back to 25, which, would, which is what my trailing stop was set at. And if it drops another point or two, then I'll be further down. So 83.14.5 is where we're at right now, which is the price there. It goes down another six points, and then it goes another seven points. Then of course this will move from 83.33 to 83.32 because that's one extra point. And that is how the trailing stop works. I know the documentation on Bybit is not brilliant for this, so I wanted to show you guys a real example of how it works. And this is a conditional trade because it, the condition has to be met, the condition being in this particular instance that we need this to go to zero. And when it goes to zero, it would automatically trigger an event to auto sell uh, at that set price, which is 83.33.5. So as long as we don't go there, it's going to sit there and it's going to just keep on going and we'll probably make something like 170 or $180 roughly. Um, so that's, that's, so that's how trailing stops work. I hope that helps you guys. I know it's a little bit complicated. If you have comments, questions, just drop them down in the links below. And um, of course we'll be back for more episodes. We're going to talk about a lot of things, conditional trading, uh, more around stop limits and limit orders and all sorts of other things. There's lots of stuff to talk about inside of Bybit and uh, give us a subscribe and click that bell on your way out. And we'll see you again real soon. Thanks a lot for checking in and um, check out Bybit. The referral code is down below.